Thank you for joining us for this COVID-19 live Town Hall Weekly Update, Your Health and Safely Reopening Our Economy. My name is Erica, and I'll be your host tonight. We'll be taking as many of your questions as we can on this live event. If you have a question, you can press star three on your phone keypad at any time, and you'll be placed in line to speak with a member of our staff. They'll take down your name and where you're calling from. The next time you hear your name, you'll be live on the call, and you'll be able to ask your question directly. Or if you're watching online, you can send your question through the website. We would like to first set the stage for tonight's discussion. Douglas County began a phase in reopening of its economy beginning April 27th, consistent with Governor Polis's statewide new safer at home orders that begin that day. Since then, your Douglas County commissioners have been working with the local business community and your Tri-County Health Department and many other community leaders on plans toward a goal to safely, responsibly, and lawfully reopen our economy. Tonight, your county commissioners will take your questions and provide you with an update on exactly what is being done to move forward on that goal. And speaking of being safe, we encourage everyone to continue demonstrating the public health recommendations found in the state orders, including following social distancing guidelines, frequent hand washing, and especially if you're over the age of 65 or you have chronic health issues, staying at home as much as possible to avoid possible exposure to COVID-19. Your Douglas County Commissioners, Roger Partridge, Laura Thomas, and Abe Layden are joining us live via video while Dr. John Douglas and Melissa Sager from Tri-County Health will join us on the phone tonight. You can watch and listen at douglas.co.us slash town hall. If you are just joining us to ask a question, you can press star three on your phone or send your question through the website. So let's go ahead and kick this off by going right to some questions. We have a lot of questions coming in um, online. We're gonna go ahead and take one from William Kerr. And he would like to know, more of explain, if Tri-County Health and County Commissioners can please describe what decisions they have made towards reopening since last week. Um, so go ahead, Commissioners. Thank you. This so is Commissioner, Commissioner Thomas, go ahead. Thank you. I'm sorry, Commissioner Partridge. My name is Laura Thomas, and the commissioners have got several task forces we're working with. My task force is the Economic Recovery Task Force. And since we last spoke with you, we have filed a variance request with the State Health Department. This one is for churches, gyms, and restaurants. It has been approved by Dr. Douglas at Tri-County Health. And now we've got our fingers crossed waiting for the state health department to approve that important variance process for us. Thank you. Commissioner Thomas, would you like to add a, a little bit on variances? Who actually submits a variance? I would be happy to do that. So when the governor issued his safer at home orders, it specifically said that counties are the ones who have to request the variance. That includes a suppression plan on how to contain the virus. And then it specifically lists what things are willing to be done by an industry to get opened. That's also supported by the five hospitals in the county. That report then goes to Tri-County Health. Dr. Douglas and his staff review that variance plan, and then it's forward on to the state health department. Thank you. Okay, great. Let's go to some other questions. Um, here we have Anne, Annette. Annette would like to know, when will playgrounds and pools be open with school out? We need these places to take our kids. And that question is for Melissa Sager with Tri-County Health. Yeah, thanks for the question. And, and I'll address a few other things along with that because outdoor activities, um, things like pools, youth sports, and access to playgrounds are just huge on our list. Um, we do anticipate further guidance from the state on May 25th. Um, as you may have heard, we recently received guidance on restaurants. This is draft guidance that the administration has put out for feedback um, from stakeholders. 
and I'll make sure that we get that information to Douglas County should you uh, want that. Um, but we anticipate uh, finalized guidance for restaurants on the 25th, as well as guidance for outdoor activities like playgrounds. We also anticipate further guidance on pools and youth sports. Um, and I'd like to emphasize that this may not, it's not gonna look like what we're used to. It's going to look a lot different, but that guidance on how we can start engaging more in these activities, um, because we do know that it's so important um, both for physical health and mental health um, to be outside. And so again, we expect that on May 25th. Great, thank you so much. And let's go to a live call. We have Jerry and Parker. Jerry, you are live. You can go ahead and ask your question. And this is for Dr. Douglas. Yeah, um, so my question is uh, basically, are we doing the right thing by uh, continuing the safer at home or stay at home um, mentality when there is an overwhelming amount of data uh, coming out that, you know, we we're, we have more suicides uh, now than we, you know, had during the Great Depression. Um, I read an article from a hospital in New York that said in March, uh, I'm sorry, February, they had approximately 250 patients that had uh, uh, heart attack symptoms. In the month of April, they had less than 10. So that would mean that 243 people stayed at home because they were afraid to go to the hospital and most likely died. We're talking about heart attack symptoms. So if you combine just the people that are dying from heart attacks and people that are dying from suicides, they're uh, equaling, if not outweighing, the amount of people that are dying from coronavirus. And lastly, uh, you know, it's it's coming out now that that most likely the virus has been in the U.S. Uh, since as early as November, um, and that we have up to 50% of the population that has been exposed to it uh, already. So, uh, why are we staying at home at this point when it, there's overwhelming evidence showing that? There's more deaths and, and disaster coming from, you know, quote unquote, the cure than than the cause than the virus itself. So, uh, Jerry, thanks for that. That's actually a lot of questions rolled into one. Uh, let me try to take a shot at that. Um, uh, uh, trying to uh, figure out the right balance of, of what to do in response to COVID in the absence of the vaccine and the absence of the treatment. Uh, was challenging for sure. Social distancing, i.e. the cure, uh, clearly was tough for everybody to bear. Um, I think we're on a pretty good path in Douglas County right now in terms of uh, steps to open things back up. Uh, the commissioners have been very discreet, but I know they're frustrated that the uh, variance process has gone more slowly than we'd like. I'm with them in that frustration. I'd like to see them move more rapidly. And I'm really happy to hear that we're going to be getting more uh, openings next week. I would have liked for the restaurants to be opening this week. We're going to be getting, uh, I hope, a response to that variant soon, and we're going to get official state guidance uh, next week. Let me, let me try to correct a few misimpressions. We actually don't yet measurably have increased suicides in Colorado. We, we all worry about the mental health issue. It's an enormously important one. That's not yet happened here. The heart attack issue is an important one as well, and that's sometimes a lagging indicator may be hard to measure. One, one thing that we really do want to emphasize is that our hospitals are safe to go to. They're open. They're open for business. If you're having chest pain, if you're having a fever, if you're having something that could be a stroke, if you're feeling depressed, by all means, please access our health care delivery system. Um, so I, I think it's a, it's a complicated situation. Douglas County statistics are really among the best in the state, and I think the county is really poised to be able to open as fast as any place, and I think that's an appropriate step for it to be taking. Wonderful. Thank you. And Commissioner Thomas, is there anything else you would like to add on that? 
You know, Douglas County has had a mental health program in place for three years. We have co-responder teams. That's a specially trained law enforcement officer with a PhD level clinician. So if you are struggling in this county, call your law enforcement office and we will have a specially trained team come right to you at your house and you can get treatment in place. And if you need other things, this team can help you get what you need. This team has been very successful. No one has gone to jail or has gone to an emergency room if they've reached out to us. So if, if you're struggling, call us, we're here to help. There is help and there is hope. Thank you. Thank you, and the questions are coming in by phone and online. So just a reminder that we are looking forward to answering as many questions as we can about your health and safely reopening our businesses and economy as much as possible tonight. We want to hear from you. To ask a question, you can press star three on your phone or send your question through the website at douglas.co.us slash town hall. Okay, now we have a question from Christine, and this is for uh, Melissa Sager with Tri-County. This is an online question, and she would like to know, I own a 5,700 square foot salon in Douglas County, and I'm very glad to be open again, but the restriction to only allow 10 people in the salon at a time is becoming a problem. When will salons be able to follow the same rules of 50% occupancy and distancing as others? Thank you, that's a really fantastic question and one we're getting a lot and not from just salons. It's happening in uh, places like gyms where there's a large open space that may be able to hold more folks safely and even places of worship, big enough to hold hundreds how do we get past that 10 person limit? Uh, the 10 person limit uh, was put into place to ensure very small gatherings, if any at all. Uh, we are looking toward what that looks to expand. So for spas, this may look like an occupancy, occupancy percentage. Um, we're not entirely sure um, how that will look. We do anticipate that update on May 25th as well. Um, from the governor's office and, and the state health department. Um, but we are very closely looking at that issue. And again, in more spaces than just spas, how do we realistically set limitations that allow people to stay safe while also accessing these services to the greatest extent possible? Um, and we're doing that in other spaces, not just size, but looking at how restaurants and retailers can utilize outdoor space. And so uh, we're talking about this a lot um, regularly with the state health department and regionally with our um, neighboring local public health agencies. And we do anticipate updates um, this coming week. Wonderful, thank you for that. Next, let's go to Christy in Castle Rock. And this question is for Commissioner Partridge. Christy, you're live, go ahead and ask your question. Hi, thank you. Um, when we rolled into the mitigation phase of this pandemic response with the stay at home order, um, it, at least we were told it was necessary to slow the spread of the virus and allow our healthcare facilities to get prepared for any spike in cases we may have. Um, so it's been about seven to eight weeks since that began. And I was wondering if you could tell us um, how the state has used that time to prepare. And can you expand on the status of the convention center, uh, the build out that was done by the Army Corps of Engineers? And do you feel Colorado is properly prepared at this time? Thank you. And Christy, this is Commissioner Partridge, your voice cut out. So I'm not sure if I got your whole question so I think you uh, had a part of your question was regarding the convention center build out. So I'm not sh familiar with that. I think you might mean whether that was in Denver. So I can't necessarily comment on what was going on in Denver regarding our convention center. So I caught that part of your question. Maybe you can repeat your question if there's further in that you would like to know. Yeah, sure. Um Or is the healthcare facilities? Can you still hear me? 
Yeah, still cutting out. I'm sorry, Christy, I heard healthcare facilities. Right. I'm, I'm trying to, <laughs> um, when we first began the mitigation phase, it was to slow the spread and to allow healthcare facilities to get prepared. And I'm wondering if someone can tell us what's been done in the seven to eight week time period that we have been preparing. And I was wondering, I didn't think the convention center was only for Denver. Perhaps it's only for Denver residents. I don't know. Um, but are we prepared? Is the state of Colorado healthcare facilities properly prepared at this time with the seven to eight weeks of preparation? Christy, is, what we can answer is we've had some requests from healthcare facilities, you know, re working with hospitals and individual clinics, no doubt, for whether it's PPE, uh, face shields, gowns. So as far as we are aware, and Commissioner Layden may be able to answer this better, he's been on the supply side of it that we are able to meet that request from all the healthcare agencies that we know in Douglas County. I know many of them have prepared themselves ordering their own equipment and supplies. I have not heard that there is any healthcare facility in particular uh, overall that is challenged. We have had a few that have requested where they could order further supplies or equipment. Commissioner Layden, would you like to add anything? I would, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. And Christy, thank you for your question. I think it's an excellent one. You know, this Board of County Commissioners really has not had a moment of uh, fear or panic. We've been proactive uh, and certainly cognizant of the potential risk to public health. Certainly when we uh, initially heard about all of this, you know, it's a, a marathon, not a sprint, and the gun went off in the dark. So we tried to be very thoughtful about protecting public health. Uh, in partnership with Tri-County Health and the state and our, our public health partners. Um, but the PPE piece is really important. Limiting that surge in protecting healthcare workers was a priority. Thanks to citizens like you, that has occurred and certainly the, the, the curve has been flattened. Uh, in terms of specifics in Douglas County, because we're, we're Douglas County commissioners, I don't wanna speak for the state of Colorado, but we can talk to uh, what has occurred here. And we're very thankful for a county manager named Doug DeBoard, who's been here for 25 years, uh, resolute and has certainly inspired confidence. But in terms of N95 masks, it's about 15,110, uh, 142,284 surgical masks, 3,333 face shields, 8,223 gowns, and then 124,000 gloves. So there's certainly a, a sense that the hospitals uh, have at least that two week supply uh, of PPE in order to uh, address any potential surges or spikes. Thank you for the question. Wonderful, thank you, Commissioner. Um, and now let's hear from Dr. Douglas. He's going to share a quick update with everyone from Tri-County Health Department. Dr. Douglas, go ahead. Yeah, thanks very much. Um, we've, we've already alluded to some of the things I was gonna include in the update, but I think one of the, the major uh, key points to begin with is that the uh, the effort that uh, Douglas County has been part of, along with the rest of the state, first day at home or recently safer at home, has in fact resulted in number one better hospital preparedness. We're better in terms of ventilators. We're better in terms of ICU bed capacity, and as uh, the commissioners have just pointed out, we're better in terms of PPE. Secondly, for Douglas County in particular, uh, the uh, statistics by which we sort of assess where's the epidemic going continue to improve. Douglas County has been on a continuous decline in terms of numbers of cases reported for the last two weeks, and the hospitalization rate has been really quite flat. That's all uh, 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 incredibly encouraging, and it's, as uh, mentioned a few minutes ago, it's one of the things that gives us confidence that moving ahead with opening things back up makes sense. Um, you know, going forward, because we don't have a vaccine, uh, there was a mention that we might have a population of immunity as high as 50%. That's probably, unfortunately, not here yet. Probably more at around 3 to 4 to 5%. Um, that means that about 95 plus percent of us may still be vulnerable to disease. Um, and so there is the, certainly the potential for a second surge. 
the, the methods that we want to try to use to protect that second surge is even as things open up, practicing social distancing. Uh, you know, we had a great question about salons. We'd like to see that space better utilized, but we'd like to see it utilized in a way that folks can uh, be apart from each other, at least that sort of recommended six feet, to try to avoid uh, 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 transmission. We've learned a lot in the last six weeks, by the way, about transmission, and we're realizing that about 25 to 50 percent of cases are probably transmitted from people who either never get sick at all, truly asymptomatic, or people who are asymptomatic at the time of transmission. And that means that you don't really have a clue if you have the infection, and you may not be able to take precautions in terms of covering your mouth because you're not coughing. So distancing yourself and one thing we still think makes a lot of sense to do is to encourage the use of face coverings, not medical grade masks, but face cloths, especially in settings where you could be transmitting from yourself to other people. One of the keys to really uh, maintaining uh, that confidence that we talked about in terms of our healthcare capacity is having available testing. Um, Douglas County has been increasing in terms of its testing capacity. And one of the, th the messages we really want to get out, because I think even in Douglas County, we, we were probably too successful in saying three or four weeks ago, if you're sick and you might have COVID, don't bother to get tested. There's not enough testing reagents. We don't have sample uh, uh, testing supplies. We don't have kits in the laboratory. That's totally changed now. We do want people who've got COVID symptoms fever, cough, shortness of breath, sudden unexplained loss of sense of smell. These are things that can be signs of COVID, and those are the things that really ought to drive folks to be tested. Uh, what can happen with that testing is, number one, uh, you can be monitored for a potential serious infection. Number two, you can be supported to stay in isolation while you're sick. And then number three, we are rapidly scaling up the ability to do something called contact tracing, so we talk to people that have been diagnosed with an infection. We find out where they've been, who they might have been around. We can alert those people they've been in contact with that they could have been exposed, ask them to quarantine themselves to avoid exposing other people. And the, 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 the focus of that strategy is rather than having something like everybody staying at home, which was really tough to bear, is that we can have just those people stay at home who actually have infection or who may have been exposed and might be incubating infection. The last thing I'd like to point out is that, as, as alluded to earlier, our medical facilities are open, and we want medical issues that have been delayed and not cared for to be dealt with. One of those issues is vaccinations for kids. Uh, Colorado has had some challenges in getting our kids adequately vaccinated, and as many of us, many parents have stayed home and not taken their kids to the doc, our numbers have fallen. We're not so far away from what I hope is going to be a successful school reopening in uh, August or at least late August, early September. Um, and one thing we need to be attentive to is trying to get our, our young kids uh, up to date on their vaccines to make sure that we can avoid having outbreaks of other infections while we're dealing with COVID. Great. Thank you, Dr. Douglas. And a reminder, if you're just now joining us, if you want to ask a question, you can press star three on your phone, or you can send your question through the website. Again, that's star three to ask a question. We will post a copy of this recording to our website in the next 24 hours. You can also visit douglascovid19.org for county-specific COVID information provided by partners throughout the county. All right, let's go ahead and go to our next question. We have Joseph in Highlands Ranch. Joseph, you are live. You can go ahead and ask your question. Great, thank you very much. I appreciate what you folks are doing. Um, as a consumer, how can I be assured that when I shop my, you know, local supermarket or uh, if I may go into a drugstore or, or one of these places, how can I be assured that uh, those places are abiding uh, by the protocol set forth if they have an employee that falls ill to COVID or report, reports symptoms 
how do I know that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing and who polices them, if I may ask? This is Melissa, and I'm from Tri-County. I'm happy to take that question. Um, really what we're doing is closely working with our businesses to ensure that they know what the requirements are. What we find is that the large majority of businesses are very interested in staying safe and protecting their employees and customers. And so Tri-County um, has enhanced our efforts working with businesses uh, through our business reopening task force. And we're working closely to answer questions daily from our businesses within the community about what the requirements are and what the expectations are. We also have our call center regularly responding to complaints. Um, and those complaints come from the community at large. Hey, this business um, isn't uh, keeping folks socially distant. We notice the employees aren't wearing masks we reach out and provide additional guidance to those businesses. If we continue to receive complaints, we follow up in-person warnings and additional information on what the requirements are, as well as connections to resources to make sure businesses can attain the requirements of the order. Um, and so a lot of focus on education and partnership. Um, if you wanna check out the Tri-County website, we have uh, produced guidance to fill gaps in state guidance. Um, and so guidance for car washes, um, guidance for golf horses, um, kind of those unique spaces that may not be touched directly by the order. Um, but increasing those efforts, participating regularly um, with our chambers of commerce in communications with the business and connections to resources. Um, but we do follow up through that complaint process. And so if you are seeing any violations or risky situations, we encourage you to call our call center. And the number for that is 303-220-9200. And you can report any violations to that number. And we have our environmental health uh, group follow up on those complaints. Wonderful, thank you so much. And we do have an online question for Dr. Douglas. Um, Joe would like to know, about antibody testing. Are they offering it, um, testing locations? Any other information you can give us about that topic, Dr. Douglas, go ahead. Sure, uh, antibody testing is a, is a hot topic and one of great interest. Uh, it's, it's evolving and moving rapidly. Um, there are a number of places across the metro area who do offer antibody testing. Um, I'm actually not completely sure if any in Douglas County are offering it at this point in time. One thing I would offer as a word of caution is that there are over 100 tests out there. Only a handful have been even preliminarily evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration for test performance. So it's a little bit uncertain if you get an antibody test uh, and it's negative, whether it's a true negative or a false negative, you could have actually had COVID and, and the test missed it. It's also not completely clear whether a positive test means you actually have had COVID. Probably it is, but we're not completely sure. Uh, the final thing that's worth mentioning is that we'd love to believe that a positive test, a true positive test, meant that you were immune from reinfection. That's the great hope. Uh, very few of the tests have been assessed for that sort of uh, degree of protection. So it's a hope at this point. There are increasing numbers of places doing it. But um, exactly how much uh, 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 reliability a given test has at this point in time uh, remains to be determined. Wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Douglas. Uh, we have an online question uh, for any of the commissioners that would like to take this. Andrea wants to know, I have several tenants in the town of Parker that are interested in applying for outdoor seating variants. Do they need to apply to multiple jurisdictions, as in town, county, state, division of alcohol, and are there fees associated with those applications? And as Commissioner Partridge, I'll be happy to answer that. First of all, you, you hit it on the head with the jurisdiction you're in. So if you were in the town of Parker, town limits, 
you would apply to Parker for that. If you're unincorporated Douglas County, you would apply for unincorporated Douglas County. Now, depending on what you would want, if it's unincorporated Douglas County and you look to see some physical changes, some temporary physical changes, the commissioners, we passed a resolution about two weeks ago to allow our planning and community development to provide some waivers for conditions to allow you to prepare your business for whatever you may need to uh, work with in a COVID situation. If it's regarding any type of a change to your liquor license, if there is a liquor license, that can be also handled through the county, even though you might have to go through the state to get some uh, variance on that. And I, we're hearing there is a little bit of a backlog to the state. So if there is interest in doing that, the sooner you get something in, the better. But certainly you can call our planning and community development for any kind of questions you have with that. And you can just reach them. Our general number is 303 660-7400 and ask for planning and community development. Wonderful, thank you, Commissioner. Um, anyone else have anything to add? All right, then let's go to, um, we are actually about halfway through our live town hall discussion about your health and safely reopening our local economy. We still have lots of questions coming in. We'd love to hear from you. If you would like to get in the queue, you can press star three to ask your question on your phone or send your question through the website at douglas.co.us slash town hall. Now let's go to Commissioner Layden. Can you share an update on what I hear is a very important community event next week just for older adults and their families and caregivers in Douglas County? Go ahead, Commissioner. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for that, Erica. You know, our seniors are so important to us, and we realize that as a result of the, the knowledge that we've all gleaned about the epidemiology of COVID-19, that, that certainly older adults are uh, experiencing symptoms in a more serious way than, than perhaps others. Um, we know that the, the residents of those uh, populations certainly have questions and uh, are asking us about how to safely reopen the economy. So next week on Friday, May 29th from 10 to 11 a.m., we're gonna dedicate an hour to answering questions from older adults and their families or caregivers. Um, I, I have to tell you that, that nothing is more heartbreaking than hearing stories about uh, children, adult children that are taking care of uh, older parents that are in uh, assisted care facilities, nursing homes, and, and really are unable to have that connection and that. Uh, ability to, to really see them face to face. And so we realize that there are uh, negative externalities associated with that uh, limitation. And we are certainly very aware of uh, the challenges associated with uh, caring for older adults. And if you are an older adult, please tune in and ask your questions. So the live town hall is gonna be presented just as these weekly updates are online and by phone or with closed captioning available. And in addition to my fellow commissioners, we're gonna be again joined by Dr. Douglas and we're also gonna hear from Carrie Erickson, who is the Executive Director of Aging Resources of Douglas County. So if you wanna find out a little bit more about this event, please visit douglas.co.us forward slash town hall. And again, that's douglas.co.us forward slash town hall. And if you need information or services uh, or re resources are certainly available for older adults right now, uh, and if it's urgent, we would ask you to please contact Aging Resources of Douglas County uh, at their call center. It's 303-814-4300. And again, that's 303-814-4300. Great, thank you, Commissioner Layden. And now we are gonna get back to your questions. What do you wanna ask the commissioners? Or if you have a question for Tri-County Health, now is the time, go ahead and press star three on your phone and you'll be able to ask your question or you can do it through the website at douglas.co.us slash town hall and remember if your question isn't answered tonight we invite you to go to douglas.co.us slash citizen connect to submit your question and we will follow up with you directly our next question is an online um it's her name is chrissy and this is for melissa with tri-county health 
she would like to know why were churches not automatically treated the same as workplaces and businesses such as Walmart and Costco, allowing 50% capacity? It's a really great question um, and uh, a focus that we have on our uh, faith community to ensure that folks are able to worship. Um, I, I have participated in the work group that the commissioners created with the faith community uh, to discuss how to increase openings. And Douglas County is also seeking a variance where we anticipate changes to uh, how folks can worship. Um, and we also expect additional guidance on May 25th um, from the state. So keep an eye out for all of those things. But, uh, but the reason that there are additional restrictions in this place is because church is a bit different than the workspace or the retail establishment that you visit. For instance, you're not tempted to hug everyone at Target when you go in to go shopping. And you're certainly not sitting really close to your coworkers like you would at church because that's a close community that you have, and it's a situation where that community is gathering closely, and that's what church really is. And so it's just a bit riskier. There's a lot of shared surfaces and close contact, and again, just that tempting, tempting to be close um, is a little different than your traditional retail space or office space. But we do still feel like uh, folks can worship in this space safely, and we're exploring how we can do that through all of those processes I mentioned, a work group with the faith community to hear what will work in their space, not just a flat 50%, but how do we stagger people arriving and divide them into groups so we can have a larger group attend in a common space, but keep folks safe as they come and go. Uh, when are masks? required and how can we be lenient in that space so if you're sitting and not moving six feet from anyone else can you take your mask off at church so we're really looking into those practical guidance uh, that allows our churches to operate safely while allowing this um, gathering to occur but while I have the opportunity we're also expecting additional guidance in addition to churches and I just wanted to touch on it because they've been big questions in previous calls so we expect guidance for summer camps and graduations on that May 5th date from the state. Um, we also um, expect guidance uh, for our restaurants that we've mentioned and churches. I also wanted to let folks know that uh, since our last town hall call, we had a few of your questions answered. Uh, garage sales are permitted under the Safer at Home order. We were able to connect with the state on that and they've assured us that garage sales can happen. We want to see folks still socially distancing, wearing a mask, maybe having some hand sanitizer available to keep those situations safe and no larger than groups of 10 gathering around. We also had uh, feedback come in on drive-in movie theaters. Um, and so the state has assured us that drive-in movie theaters can also continue operations in the same way that we see activities like graduation and church ceremonies happening in drive-in style. Um, but things will still look different uh, in all of these spaces. It's not going to look the same as you've seen before. As Dr. Douglas mentioned, we're looking for strict compliance with social distancing. So even in those churches, uh, staying six feet apart, wearing a mask, hand washing a lot. Um, so things are gonna look different and you can support your businesses and community by really staying safe as we increase our activities. Um, so keep an eye out for practical guidance from Tri-County and the state and updates on all of those uh, business activities. Great, thank you so much. And now let's go to our poll question. We'd like to make sure you stay informed about what's happening in Douglas County. So if you'd like to receive information or keep continuing to receive information from the county, please press one on your telephone keypad now. And also we have a number of questions coming in about where to get tests. So I'm gonna give you a website. Um, you can go visit www.douglas.co.us slash COVID-19 dash testing. And you'll be able to see all of the nearby locations offering private diagnostic testing. All right, let's go to our next live question. We have Kelly 
in Castle Rock, uh, a question for Commissioner Thomas. Kelly, you are live. Go ahead and ask, ask your question to the commissioner. Yes, thank you. I was wondering when the, uh, like, Park Meadows Mall and uh, the restaurants are going to open? That's a very popular question, Kelly. Thank you for asking. So on uh, May 12th, Douglas County did submit a variance to the state health department that was approved by Tri-County Health so that we could get Park Meadows open. Pam Kelly has done an amazing job there making a very safe place. We have not yet heard about the mall, um, but we're hoping soon because the Botanic Gardens in Denver submitted their request on May 13th after ours went in and they were approved yesterday. So we're hoping that we should hear before the weekend also, the county has submitted a variance for restaurants, churches, and gyms that have been approved by Dr. Douglas at Tri-County Health. Those also are waiting at CDPHE, the State Health Department, for approval. So know that your commissioners, all three of us, have worked hard to get those in place at the State Health Department. So we're just waiting for the State Health Department to let us know when our restaurants can open. That's a nice question, Kelly. That's very popular with a lot of people. Thank you. Great, and our next question is Roz in Castle Rock, who also has a question for Melissa. Uh, you are live, Roz. You can go ahead and ask your question. Thank you, and thanks for taking my call. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm an event venue owner in Douglas County, and I just heard you say that you had um, submitted a variance for restaurants um, and gyms. Does that also include event venues? This is Melissa. Um, it's my understanding that the current variance request in uh, does not include event venues. It's one of the spaces that we are concerned about, again, uh, just conducive to gathering. It's why we use those spaces uh, to gather. And uh, there is movement in those spaces, whether it be a wedding with dancing or a concert with dancing, uh, the serving of food and beverage, and uh, there are a lot of concerns in that space, um, but we are having conversations about what it looks like to uh, operate uh, events safely. Um, it may not be one of the first things that come, again, just because that activity is riskier, um, but we are talking about what that looks like. I'm not sure, um, maybe Commissioner Thomas, did you want to add anything to that? Yes, Melissa, thank you. I'll add that we have a team that's been writing these variances, and we've got other things on the list that they'll be working on. And so absolutely, wedding venues is one we've had a lot of questions about. We've had questions about funerals. We've had questions about playgrounds, pools. Um, so just know that we have a long list of these, and our staff is working on these as we speak. And as soon as we can get them done, they'll go to Dr. Douglas and then to the State Health Department. And if you have any questions or ideas, please reach out to us about what else you need done and what you think we can do safely, because we are using the industry's um, advice on how to write these variances for them. So thank you for that question. All right, our next question is for Melissa Saker. This is Scott online, and he would like to know, in a corporate training environment, how many people can be in that training and at what point will that number increase? So right now the strict limit on all private and public gatherings is 10. And so if you're in that in a single space, four doors and a, uh, four walls and a door, um, that's limited to 10. Uh, we do see increased abilities um, in certain spaces like places of worship where the state has said you can operate in multiple rooms. And so dividing those larger groups up into smaller groups in different rooms is what's safest now. Again, just like with event venues um, and a variety of these businesses, we are looking at what it looks like to operate safely in those larger environments again, concerns being common areas uh, when you have so many people in one space. 
um, exiting, um, coming to the event uh, using uh, facilities, restrooms, and the like, uh, that those conversations are happening. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And again, we have a lot of questions coming in about the testing location. So I just want to go ahead and give that website address out one more time. You can visit www.douglas.co.us slash COVID-19 dash testing to find all of those nearby locations that are offering private diagnostic testing. Okay, our next question is for Commissioner Partridge. This is Jim, uh, and Jim is an online question, and he would like to know what is the status of the DC fair? Jim, you uh, hit a soft spot for me, no doubt. I think you hit the soft spot for all the commissioners. Right now, we have tasked the fair board to prepare a fair for the conditions that exist. As we know, if the fair had to occur today, our attitude is can do, is that we would like to see the fair continue, plan for what it would be right now. Very hopeful that we'll see the easing of restrictions so the fair board then can add on, add on the events while we're seeing these restrictions ease. So the fair board is pleased to hear that because it gives them ability to plan, gives them some objective means to be able to prepare for. Now we certainly know how to put on a fair. So if everything would just ease up right away, we could just go on as business. In fact, the fair board now is already preparing and planning for next year's fair. And that's how much they do in advance. So we also know that the children ha ha already have all their animals. Cattle were purchased back in November, December of 2019, and, and sheep and hog and chicken and everything were purchased here in the spring. So we know the children have their animals and are caring for them. So we're going to do everything we can to make sure the kids are able to show, demonstrate their animals, demonstrate their abilities to show an animal and to make a sale. So we are planning for a, a fair to continue and exist. Thank you, Commissioner Partridge. And we do have another question for you, uh, an online question. Have any businesses made requests for modifications under the emergency process put into place by the county? and have those been approved? Yes, I talked with our planning department today. There have been requests and uh, they are just phenomenal. And one thing we have not missed a beat on uh, basically anything with the county operations. And even with this variance and waiver process, they are, they are completing those in a very quick manner. Now I will tell you again, the change with a floor pan, plan with a liquor license does have to go through the state if your if a liquor license doesn't already have that in place and we understand that's been a little bit delay but anything that's going through the county we're uh, we usually look at things in a 24 to 48 hour turnaround period wonderful thank you uh, let's go to Kristen in Parker she has a question uh, for Melissa. Kristen, you are live. You can go ahead and ask your question. I, um, I have a graduating senior from Ponderosa, and I want to know what, if anything, we could do to still organize a graduation ceremony. It's a big deal to a kid that's been in school for over 12 years to be handed a certificate today while in his car in the parking lot of a high school after he turns in his books to a bunch of strangers wearing masks. Very yeah, we feel, we feel the same. And it's don't very important. feel the same way. You don't feel the same way, I promise. 
and I couldn't possibly understand, you're absolutely right, but what we are looking at are unique plans to make these events happen. So Tri-County has connected with our area high schools to discuss innovative ways to allow schools to acknowledge their seniors. So Tri-County has worked with schools to allow teachers to line the streets in their vehicles and step out to wave to students as they go by. We've had uh, situations where um, uh, participants, the audience are watching from vehicles, but students are able to exit their vehicle to walk across the stage and take their diploma and even take a picture at the end of that stage. And it's not going to be the same, um, but we are really uh, working with our schools to see what unique ways we can get our students acknowledged in a format that they're comfortable with. And so if uh, Ponderosa High School would like to reach out to us, I'm happy to chat with them about what a plan could look like uh, to have even parents involved in that process. So please do reach out. Thank you so much, Melissa. And a final reminder, if your question wasn't answered tonight, we encourage you to visit douglas.co.us slash citizen connect to submit your question and we will be responsive. Be sure to join us again next week on Wednesday, May 27th at 4.30 for additional updates on our economic reopening and also Friday, May 29th at 10 o'clock a.m. to hear about resources for older adults and what's important to keep you safe. Before we conclude our live town hall, we'd like to give your Douglas County Commissioners a few moments for final comments. So let's go ahead and hear from Abe Layden first. Uh, Abe, go ahead. Thank you, Erica. Thank you to my colleagues and to Tri-County Health, certainly everybody on the call. I just wanted to share with you uh, a little bit more about our process and where, where we've been over the last several months addressing this crisis. You know, under Title 25, Douglas County does not have the ability to issue public health orders. And frankly, since the governor's orders, uh, Tri-County doesn't have the ability to modify those either. Uh, the best that we can do is work in close collaboration with Tri-County Health and with our partners at the state to identify ways to phase open responsibly. No doubt, every life that's been lost is significant. We've lost 38 in Douglas County. And each one is certainly very significant and special and near and dear to all of our hearts. But we also have to think about this dual crisis, the economic crisis, mental health, substance abuse, domestic violence, as well as jobless claims, and ultimately look and balance those numbers uh, against what we're seeing on a hospitalization and deaths uh, standpoint on a daily basis to really help try to make the right decisions. I just wanted to say that I am so encouraged by all of you out there that have sent so many encouraging comments. Uh, the salt and light that you represent out there is tremendous and you have lifted us up as leaders. It's meant a lot for, for me to hear from each and every one of you that has uh, taken the time to email or call or reach out uh, and share your thoughts with us. Um, certainly, we see fo folks out there that have decided to uh, use COVID-19 as a uh, you know, a political tool to advance themselves or attack other folks. Uh, and there's nothing more reprehensible than that. And we certainly uh, don't like that. We know you don't like that either, but just know that uh, as one commissioner, I'm trying to focus upstream, focus on what will be positive and best for uh, our entire county. But again, really wanna thank you for uh, all you're doing. I know that when we link arms together, we can see that end in sight. So stay well, Douglas County. Thank you so much, Abe. And now let's hear from Commissioner Thomas. Uh, go ahead, Laura. Thank you, Erica. I would like to thank all the people who have listened to these phone calls and have been emailing us, reaching out to us. We hear your frustration. We feel your frustration. I wasn't able to see my granddaughter for several weeks. And so now I can at least see her. Um, so just know that, that we understand how hard this has been for all of you and that we are working as hard as we can with Tri-County Health, going on to the State Health Department, getting our county open. And I, I don't like the word new normal. I'm gonna say we're at a new abnormal for now, but know that we're doing everything we can to get back to the lives we all loved. Thank you and God bless. 
Thank you, Commission Th Commissioner Thomas. And now let's hear from Commissioner Partridge. Roger, go ahead. Thank you, Erica. And as my colleagues state, thank you everyone who has taken part in these calls this evening and has continued to email, communicate with us. Many of us certainly understand uh, directly, we have spouses, friends, and families that are in situations of either furloughed or layoff or certainly out of work themselves. And that has been one of our biggest uh, challenges that we struggle with every day. How can we help you all get back to your lifestyle? I have to really compliment the residents of Douglas County. We've heard this from Tri-County over and over how well the Douglas County residents have taken to heart this virus seriously and want to see it end. No doubt we start on a very good level because we are the healthiest county in the country and that is because you the residents value your health and take care of yourself and do respond if you do have symptoms and any other conditions and are sensitive to others. So thank you Douglas County for helping the numbers flatten and actually decline. It's been wonderful to be able to be on this side of government, uh, being a government on the side that has seen real positive changes when some other counties haven't had that. We continue to work and brainstorm and listen and ask questions saying, what can we do more? Please know we have certainly reached out. All of us have been in contact with our federal and state legislatures. Even today, we're just on a call with the directly with the governor and the director of CDPHE. So they're hearing from us directly. So indirectly, your voices are being heard. Now, would you like to see things occur faster? Certainly. As we already know, uh, the two variances we have, we for the mall, for the restaurants, for the churches, and for gyms, we believe they should be open. We believe even more should be open, and that's what we continue to work on. We're encouraged to hear there may be some action coming up as soon as next Monday, although we all work very hard to try and get further responses and further recovery, no doubt. So thank you, Douglas County, for continuing to be sensible. You, it's, a, it's a wonderful group to work with, and I have to say I'm very privileged to work with the other two commissioners, all the other elected officials in Douglas County, because the attitude attitude is, we are here to serve you as best we can and provide the services that you need and require and request. So we thank you, stay health and we stay healthy and we hope you are blessed in all ways. Wonderful, thank you, Commissioner. And thanks to all the commissioners on the call as well as Dr. Douglas for joining us. Also, thank you to all of you who joined us tonight, and thank you for all the questions as well. On behalf of Douglas County and the Tri-County Health Department, thank you for sharing this evening with us. We hope you will join us again next Wednesday for the Your Health and Safely Reopening Our Economy update. That will be at 4.30. Again, that's Wednesday at 4.30. You can also join us Friday, May 29th, for COVID-19 and older adults. Be well, be blessed, and good night.